So I'm actually meeting up with a friend named Brian today. Um, he's been a longtime friend. I've known him since I was a little kid, literally a little kid. And uh, now we're, we're both grown up. Um, but he's got a 2021 or 22 F-150 3.5 EcoBoost. And we're gonna get that on the dyno today and see how it does on pump gas. He's completely stock, um, no mods, just tune only. We're gonna use a Cobb Access port, of course. And I'm hoping for 430, 440 wheel horsepower. These trucks stock usually make low 300s, so we'll run a baseline too, of course, to see what it makes stock. But um, you should pick up, you know, a solid 100, 110 horsepower, and we'll vlog it. So not a lot of people have vlogged these F-150s. Um, there's a lot of Raptor stuff out there, but these newer, these newer EcoBoost 3.5s, there's not a whole lot of information out there. And, and while I've tuned a lot of them, there's just, you know, there's not very many dyno charts. There's not very many baselines and things like that. So. I'll get a baseline for you guys. I'll get a 91 octane pro tune for you guys and we'll go from there. So I think now would be a good time to address um, why I use a DynoJet. A lot of people in the industry consider the DynoJet as the most consistent dyno, uh, the dyno that you can go from one DynoJet across town to another DynoJet in town to another DynoJet, and they're all they're all within the same you know three or four horsepower. Uh, there are other brands out there like Mustang dynos that can be manipulated, and of course when you manipulate numbers, then what good are they? You know if you don't have a proper baseline or you don't have a proper final number or you do have a proper final number, but you change it and bump it up or bump it down or whatever the situation may be. Um, you don't really want to use something, that, you know, a tool that is not measurable, right? Um, so I use dyno jets and I consider dyno jets to be the dyno that I base all of my information on because they're extremely consistent. Another thing that I do with baseline numbers is I'll do a baseline pull stock, but I'll do the baseline and I usually like to do three of them and then I'll take the average or I'll take the highest baseline. And then I'll compare it against my final number um, at the highest final number. What I've seen happen a lot is I've seen companies do a baseline and then do another baseline and then do another baseline and do another one with the truck just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And then they'll use the lowest number as a baseline and the highest number tuned as the final number. And what that does is it creates a false illusion of more power gained uh, when you do something like that. And so. You know, it's, I, I personally wouldn't do that because I don't think it's it's accurate and it's real, a real representation of what you get. And also, if, if your customer takes their truck to a dyno and is able to run their truck on a dyno, they won't, won't get what's advertised. And so, I just, I like to be transparent. I'll do a baseline pull and I'll give you the real number 
and then I'll do a final pull and I'll give you the real number. And you can take the delta from there. But with other other um, shops or whatever, you know, posting charts that are 150 horsepower over stock on a pump gas tune, um, you know. So yeah, I don't do that. I give you the real baseline and the real final number, and it's reasonable. Um, I, I don't inflate the numbers. There's no need to inflate numbers. Uh, at the end of the day, it really all comes down to feel anyway. So whether it makes 100 horsepower over stock or 800 horsepower over stock, if it feels good to the customer, that's all that matters. So inflating numbers is no no sense in doing that. Um, it, it doesn't do anybody any good. So I just thought I'd mention that because there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of dynos used and there's a lot of numbers that aren't real and a lot of, of inflated this and that. And as long as you have a proper baseline, um, you're not going to have any problems with showing up a proper final number in the delta between the two and so that's what i strive to do is give everybody a proper number and give you guys the right the right information <laughs> no problem dude Well, yeah, 463 is really, really good for those trucks. Uh, they baseline real low 300s. So, you can hear them having fun out there. Yeah, that's exciting. This truck did really well. I'm super excited with the way it turned out.